Hi everyone, I'm Faye, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be on the Ordinary Serum Foundation. This guy right here. Now, this has been a very highly in demand product. I had to pre-order it, it took a long time to come, but I am finally able to do a first impressions and a wear test on this product. So I ordered two different shades. I have one NS, very fair, neutral with silver highlights, and I have 1.1 N, which is fair neutral. Now, I ordered this when I was my winter colour. This may, in fact, now be a little bit pale, but we'll see. So here we have the product. The slightly darker one. And it has SPF 15, it's supposed to be lightweight, it's supposed to be quite highly pigmented, um, so that although it's lightweight in formula, it offers a bit more coverage, coverage than you would normally get from um, a formula that is this consistency. Now, it comes with a pump. It doesn't have a lid on the pump, but the bottle is perfectly serviceable. It's plastic, it's lightweight. The uh, pump is nice, as far as I can tell, without actually having pumped anything out. I will do that in a sec. Um, and for the price, price will go here because I don't remember it um, you know you're not expecting like a fancy glass bottle because this is a cheap product and you're hoping that it's the product inside that is going to be good right so I'm gonna shake this and I'm gonna leave a pump on my hand because I'm not sure oh which way I've got to turn that I'm not sure if this is the right color oh okay so this here is shade one Point one N. You can see it's quite liquidy. It's definitely got a sort of neutral undertone. You can see it doesn't look too yellow. Very liquidy. Feels very nice. So that's the slightly darker one, which I feel I'm going to probably use today, and it's still going to be too light because now I have a bit of a tan. But at least it's going to fit me for most of the year. Um, right, let's have a little pump of the shade 1 with the silver highlights. I'm quite curious as to what it means by silver highlights. Okay. Okay, so there is a shade um, 1 NS, which you can see is definitely lighter. It's very pale, that one. I don't think that's going to fit me right now. But in the winter, it should be good. There's quite a big difference between the 1 and the 1.1. Like, I have a feeling like I might have to mix these. Um, We'll wait and see. Right, I need to wipe my hand. So here you can see I've put a little swatch on my cheek so that I can tell which colour they are. And I'm surprised actually, the 1.1 I think is actually going to be fine. It may in fact be a little dark. We'll see. We'll see. We'll go with the 1.1. Um, the and see what happens. Now, in terms of tools, I've got a variety of things here. First of all, my fingers. I do quite like putting on foundation with my fingers. This does say, dispense a few drops into the palm or the back of your hand, smooth on and blend throughout the face, ideally outward from the midpoint of the face. So it doesn't specify um, whether you want to use it with a sponge, with a brush. So I'm going to try applying it and spreading it with my fingers, see how that works. And then I've also got a sponge and a kabuki brush. You get quite a lot with one pump. <laughs> Just gonna try dabbing this onto the centre of the face. I'm not wearing any primer and I'm not gonna set this with powder because I wanna see you know how it wears by itself. This is more pigmented than I was expecting. Don't press the pump all the way down. I got a lot of product with that one pump. Too much product, I think. That is not... That, yeah, that is probably <laughs> going to be too much product for my face. So, so far, I think Fingers is spreading the product nicely. I'll probably go over with a sponge to remove any streaks and to absorb some of the excess product that I have going on here. 
but oh it, feel, it feels really nice on the skin it really does feel quite moisturizing I have very dry skin so you know that's something that I do appreciate take my sponge I'm just gonna dab over the reason I didn't want to go straight in with the sponge is because it's a very liquidy product and I didn't want to absorb all the product into the sponge before I got it on my face okay I'm gonna try the brush on the forehead here you know what the brush is actually working very nicely too a little dab on the nose I'm going to go back to the sponge around my nose. Generally, I do prefer a sponge to a brush. That's because I do have dry skin. So occasionally, if I use a brush, it will ruck, sort of ruck up the skin and accentuate dry patches. Um, whereas a sponge adds a little bit of moisture um, to the foundation because it's damp. And I find helps it blend really nicely, like I... I prefer to slightly lighter coverage look generally and a brush generally means a foundation that being heavier coverage than if you use it with a sponge so that's really the reason for my preference also I think brushes are just harder to use in terms of getting a streak free finish I feel like a sponge is pretty foolproof and I like that so far I am really really impressed I'm gonna just dip my sponge into the bit that's left on my hand and see if I can add any extra coverage yeah that I feel like that's added on top pretty nicely so far I am very very impressed and you know for, it's such a lightweight formula but when they say it has you know a high level of pigment you know they're not lying this this definitely is more pigmented than I expected and I think this is actually a really good colour. I was a little bit worried when I first pumped it on my hand that it would be a bit too orange. But now that it's on my face, I think it's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to make sure I'm a little bit blended down my neck here. I also thought it would feel really tacky on the face. And it feels a lot less tacky than I was expecting. Like, I wouldn't say it's dry by any means. It's definitely not dry. Um, but I really hate the feeling of a really sticky, sticky foundation. Um, it's why even though I have dry skin, I usually always set my foundation because I hate, 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 hate when my hair sticks to my face. Um, but, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna set this today so that we can do a wear test without, um, you know, fiddling with the actual product. But so far, I feel like it's dried down a little bit. It's not really sticky. It looks dewy, but not over the top dewy where it looks really wet. The colour is really, really good. I, as a pale person with a yellow undertone, sometimes really struggle with foundation colours. But either they're, if they're light enough, they're often too pink. And if they're yellow enough, they're often too dark. So, I am very happy right now. Actually, I'm kind of speechless, like this, this, this was really easy. This was so easy. I feel like this foundation is almost foolproof. There's no streaks, there's no patchiness. It blended really easily. It's given my skin a really nice perfected look without looking over the top. So you can still see like my moles here and a few little freckles through the product. So it looks very skin-like, very natural. But at the same time, it's um, really evened out my skin tone. It's uh, hidden any patches of redness. Great. So far, so good. I will check in throughout the day, let you guys know how it wears. So it's been around four hours that I've had this foundation on. Please ignore the eye area. I've put some concealer on. I set it with a new powder. 
the powder and the concealer did not mix very well and now I have a weird like discolored dark slightly yellowy orangish concealer situation going on but I didn't want to take off my makeup because I was doing a wear test of this foundation so we just have to live with it. I'll shuffle a little closer so you can see uh, what's a happening. Okay, so I have not set my face except for the under eye <laughs> mistake. So I think this has really lasted pretty well for something that hasn't been set. Um, forehead and cheeks are fine. A little bit of breakup on the chin here. Um, it's come off around my nose just because I have hay fever and I've been blowing my nose. Um, I'd say the only areas where there are any issue right now is really around the side of my mouth. So here, where my mouth moves, I have these smile lines. It has separated a little bit. Um, it's looking a little bit patchy. It doesn't really surprise me given that I didn't set the foundation. On the other side you can kind of see a little bit of settling into the smile lines. On the chin, a little bit of breakup, nothing, nothing too severe. But the rest of the face looks absolutely fine. Now this didn't set down 100%, it's still very slightly tacky, but not to the point where it's coming off on my fingers. It's almost six, so I will check back in later on tonight before I take my makeup off and let you know if it's broken down or shifted anymore, if it's worn off in any areas. Hi everyone, it's 10pm. I've lost my natural light, so I'm back in my very noisy bathroom. <sighs> I'm sad. I'm sad and disappointed. I had such high hopes for this foundation, but after, what is it, eight hours, it is a mess guys, it is such a mess. I, I am oily. Me, of the Sahara dry skin, I'm oily. This never happens. <sighs> like occasionally I'll get a little bit in this area here, but not this bad. And I know I didn't prime, I didn't set with powder, but I've done that with other foundations before and it's not been this much of a disaster. Like, come and have a look. If I bring you down here, you can see the side of the nose. Hopefully you can see that. It is so broken up. It does not look good. It does not look cute in the slightest. There is so, so much separation, just a mess. Same on the other side here. <sighs> I don't know what to say. It went on so nicely. It looked nice for the first couple of hours. And then... <sighs> I am going to try this with some primer, with some powder, uh, to see how it wears. I'm not going to upload this video now, I'm going to do that hopefully tomorrow, film it, see if it goes any better, see if there are any particular products that really work well with this foundation to make it last, but I mean, if it breaks up this much on someone who's dry, then if you're oily, I can already say I would not recommend this. The Ordinary do make another foundation called the Coverage Foundation, I believe it's called, comes in the exact same shade range but is meant for oilier uh, combination skins really, I think. And that is meant to give a little bit more coverage. I imagine it's got a more matte finish. I, I haven't tried it. I might have to buy it at this rate and try it because this this one, even though I'm really dry, might not be working well for me. Um, I'm so disappointed. Okay, I'm gonna stop whinging now because it's only foundation and uh, I'm gonna wash this oil slick disaster area off my face and go to bed and pray that tomorrow is a better day. Another day, another test. Hopefully this foundation is gonna to last today. Now, I don't really own any mattifying primers because oil isn't usually a problem for me. So the primer I use today is also by The Ordinary. What I'm hoping is that 
because they're both by the same brand, they would have formulated them together and designed them so that they work with their other products because that would make sense, right? So this one is the High Spreadability Fluid Primer. Um, they do have another primer as well, um, but this is the one I have, so hopefully this is going to help. I then applied my foundation, same as yesterday, spread it on with my fingers, blended it out with my sponge. I set with my Vichy Derma Blend powder. And then for good measure, I added the NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray. Now, I usually actually use the Dewy Setting Spray, but that did not sound like a good idea with this foundation, so I went with the matte one. Uh, I've used obviously other products on my face to do my makeup. I've stuck to powder products. I didn't add any of the creams because I didn't want to affect um, the foundation. So it's been on about an hour. At the moment it looks fine. <sighs> I'm really worried that this is going to go wrong. I'm supposed to see actual live living people later today so I don't want to look like a mess. Please. <sighs> right. I'll keep you updated. We've reached the three hour mark, so far, so good. I'm finding that it is staying in place much better with the primer and the setting powder and the setting spray. By the way, um, just let you know, I've changed the lighting in here to film this clip. I was getting a little bit too much light and it was sort of bouncing off my face and making it hard to see what was actually going on. Um, so I've got rid of some of the light. Hopefully this is something that is better. I'm really trying to get a setup where you can still see, you know, me, but you're not getting like this kind of washed out, perfected, um, ring light kind of view where you actually can't see um, the texture, you can't see um, dryness or you can't see any of the problems. You know, I want you to really be able to see my skin. As you can see, the situation today is a lot, lot better, thankfully. And uh, yeah, I've got a few little fine cracks um, in the foundation just because it's completely set and as I move my face the foundation can't stretch with the skin so we get little cracks. But that's really normal and you can only see it really, really up close. It doesn't look bad, you know, you can't see it from like normal person distance away. So far, so good today. I'm hoping it doesn't all go to hell um, when I go and play tennis and sweat. I mean, the honestly, the amount of setting powder and setting spray that is on my face right now, it should stay there. I will check in again later and uh, yeah, pray that it, it stays looking okay. Right. Back to work. It's 8pm. This makeup has been on for around seven hours. I just got back from tennis. I haven't taken my cap off yet because I feel like it's going to be a complete mess when I do and I want to talk about this area first. So I've been sweating a lot. It's been quite sunny and warm outside. It's a little bit humid. And I have some creasing in my smile lines. Now this is very normal for me. Um, it's the thing that I battle most when doing my foundation. Usually when I do my makeup, I use a little brush to remove any excess product from my smile lines um, so that there is less product to crease up in that area. I didn't do that today because I wanted to see how uh, this foundation lasted in that area and like pretty much every other product I use, it creased in that area. But in terms of oil, in terms of the weird, gross sort of separation that happened yesterday, we don't have any of that. I'm actually quite impressed with how this held up in this area today. Um, again, I mean, it's down to using probably a good primer, a good powder, and a good setting spray. But, you know, sometimes you use all those things with the foundation and it still doesn't work. So the foundation has a role to play too, and it's it's done quite well. I will shuffle closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Here you can see what I mean about the creasing in the smile lines. But you know, around the chin area, in terms of um, 
you know, the area where it went wrong yesterday. Today, you know, it looks okay. It looks all right. Um, the cap is obviously going to have destroyed this bit. Can't blame that on the foundation. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, this, this is pretty good. And to be honest, you know, I could probably tap out this if I wanted to with a little sponge. I'm, uh, I'm going to try that. If I go find a sponge, I will be right back. Okay, I have a little uh, mini sponge here, so I'm going to see if this can be rectified or if it's just going to mess it up. You know what? That actually blended back out okay. Um, I can't always do that. Sometimes the foundation mixes with the powder and if you try and move it you just get a mess. But that, that I was able to blend back out and it's okay. Great! Awesome! I didn't think this was going to be, you know, a situation that I could rectify after all that sweating. But, you know what, it looks okay. I'm actually quite impressed. Final thoughts. This is a good foundation. It's not a great foundation. It's not going to be my favourite foundation. Um, I still probably prefer my um, Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. But, it is very good for the price. And, you know, the shade range is really, really good. Now, a lot of products that I use, like the Misha BB Cream, are Korean products, and they only come in, like, three, four, five very pale shades. So, if you are someone with a deeper complexion, you know, they're no use to you. Whereas The Ordinary makes these two foundations, and they come in a very wide range of shades. Um, I'm still sure there'll probably be a few people who can't find the right colour on the deeper end in terms of the correct undertone because I know um, from, you know, watching other people's videos that that is quite a difficult thing to get right. But, you know, I would recommend it. I would recommend it because it's really foolproof to apply. Like, you can spread it on with your fingers, tap out with a sponge. It blends very, very, very nicely and it meshes in with the skin. It doesn't sort of sit on top and look weird. It doesn't highlight any dry areas. Um, it didn't really settle, you know, into my pores or anything like that. So that gives it a big tick. And then, yes, okay, you can't just leave it. It's not a foundation you're just gonna be able to slap on your face and go, it needs to be set. Um, I'm going to also try, you know, not using a powder, but using a setting spray, see if that works. Um, I have a feeling probably not, I think this will need to be a foundation that is powdered. So if you don't like powdering um, your foundation, this is probably not for you. My camera stopped recording because it ran out of memory, but honestly I was just like wittering on, I don't think I said anything particularly important. Sum, summing up, one thumb up. Two thumbs up for the price. It's a good foundation, it's not a great foundation. If you have oily skin, this is probably gonna be a no-no, but you might wanna check out their coverage foundation. I've ordered it this morning, because I wanna try that one out too, so I will put up a video when I get that. Um, yeah, it blended out very nicely again, in the smile lines where with a little sponge, so if you have an issue with that, with this foundation, you will be able to touch it up throughout the day without it going weird or clumpy because sometimes once you've powdered something if it creases you can't do anything about it this foundation wasn't like that it was fixable i will put some links in the description box below for where you can buy it um yeah not going to do another check-in because i've put this through a lot already today with all the sweat and tennis and when i say i go to play tennis i mean i try and play tennis i'm not actually good at it my boyfriend's trying to teach me i kind of suck <laughs> um Okay, right, I'm going to go get some dinner because I'm starving, and uh, I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys!